Every day, it becomes clearer that local LLMs are the future of generative AI. Why? From companies to indie devs, using LLM APIs comes at the expense of privacy, money, and speed. Not everyone can afford or wants to torch five, 10, 50 thousands of dollars to build, test, and use LLMs in production environments. Right now, these are the costs we have to pay for the best models, but local LLMs are catching up fast. The issues with speed, RAM requirements, GPU requirements, and ease of access are being solved one day at a time by the incredible open source LLM community. We've seen local LLMs make huge strides in the past six months. But how close are we to having a local on-device LLM providing real value for real use cases? And if they're not ready, how will we even know when they are? Let's discuss local LLM viability. Of course, the TLDR is local LLMs are not ready. For most use cases, it takes a ton of work to set up a local LLM and to get it into the shape in which you can use it in a production environment. But by utilizing one of the most important engineering practices, we can learn why local LLMs aren't ready yet, and we can set up systems to monitor when they are ready so we can be ready to take advantage of the incredible opportunity. So what is this engineering practice? It is none other than testing. I've talked about prompt foo in the past, but by testing our prompts, by testing LLMs, we can know when they're ready for our specific use case, and we can watch as local LLMs make progress and become more viable every single day. So let's break down how you can test your prompts and local LLMs so you can unlock the value of local LLMs as soon as they're ready. Let's look at this local LLM eval code base. Link's gonna be in the description. So in this test, we have two sets of providers. We have cloud LLMs and we have local on-device LLMs. We're gonna look at how these two sets of LLMs, cloud versus local, performs against a natural language query to SQL prompt. So the goal of the prompt is to take a natural language query and convert it to SQL. We have some light instructions here on how to convert a natural language query into an SQL statement. So every single provider you see here is going to be run using that prompt and we'll pass in the NLQ and the database dialect in each one of these tests. And of course the test specifies what the natural language query is and it'll assert the results we're looking for. So let's go ahead and just run this, right? In prompt foo, you first export your API keys. Then we're just gonna run prompt foo eval. So this is going to run all these tests. So I have, you know, 10 tests here. And for each provider, it's going to run each one of the tests. So we'll see about 40 results after this test runs. Okay, fantastic. So that finished, you can see here we had four failures. 36 successes. You can see here we can run this prompt foo view command to view a local web viewer of the results. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll open up the browser and here we go. So this is really cool. So you can see for each prompt and for each combination of variables, we can see the results of our tests. So looking at each model, you can see here we have the GPT-3, we have GPT-4, and then we have Gemini Pro. Nothing really exciting here, nothing kind of unexpected. Each one of our 10 test cases, you know, select user with ID, and the SQL, of course, is select star from users where ID equals five. And, you know, the test passed for almost all of these. You can see here, Gemini Pro performs a little worse than GPT 3.5. Both GPT 4s performed perfectly. They nailed every single SQL statement, right? So this is really cool. This is the power of prompt foo. This is the best way to test your LLMs right now, the best way to test your prompts with different variables, with different prompts. I did a whole video on this. I'm gonna link that in the description as well for you to check out. You know, as expected, the best models perform the best. You know, we pay for these. We do expect, you know, top high-end performance out of these models. And you can see here in the test.yaml file, in the code base and just to mention it here you know we're operating inside of this nlq to sql test suite so essentially every directory here represents a test suite you can you know play with these in the code base it's a great way to get started with prompt foo and start testing your specific use cases that you want to nail we need to move away from using llms as toy applications and really start building real valuable products with them and how do you build real valuable products you need to know that your code that your infrastructure that your product is working and of course the the way to know that your product is working, your application is working, is to test. But so let's go ahead and take a look at our on-device 
local LLMs. I'm gonna just go ahead and run the test first and then we can talk about how exactly it's set up. The results of these tests are really, really interesting. So let's go ahead, comment these out. I'm gonna run the top four here. So I have an older Mistral model. I'm running the latest updated version of Mistral. And then I have both Phi 2 and I have Rocket 3B. I'm not gonna run Tiny Llama. My computer started making weird sounds, which it never has when I started running this. I think there's something up with this model. So just maybe a heads up. We're gonna run these. These are some of the best open source local LLMs right now. And we're just gonna run them against the exact same test, right? So you can see here in this directory, it points right to the prompt.txt in the same you know file here and it also points to test star.yaml so that's going to be all the tests and we can you know open these up one by one these are just going to be basically the exact same thing with different assertion statements and different sql passed in right so you know this provides a really cool way for you to test individual cases for your application while you're changing up some of the variables right changing up some of the inputs that your user will likely input into your code right and some other additional variables right that you might have that maybe your back end is going to you know insert into your prompt right and then you can use this really just clean and simple syntax, uh, you know, with curly braces to, you know, specify exactly what you want swapped out in your prompt. So really cool. I love how they set this up. Shout out to all the prompt food developers. They're building a really fantastic tool here. Without further ado, let's run the on-device local LLMs and compare the results. Let's see how close they are to providing real value for real use cases. So to run these, we're just gonna do the exact same thing, prompt foo eval, and here we go. So right now, under the hood, a bunch of RAM and resources is being you know reserved and run to fire off these local LLMs. For those of you that don't know, I'm not using Olama, I'm using something called Llamafile. I did a whole video on Llamafile, definitely go check that out. Long story short, if we open up the custom models directory here, you can see we have a couple JS files that allow us to run custom local models, but we also have a bunch of Llama files. And again, the best place to go to learn about Llama files is that video and then the original Llama file code base. The whole idea is you can run an entire local open source model in a single file. And it's really, really incredible. I just want to point out something also here, you know, while these tests are running, my M2 high-end MacBook Pro just started humming. First time I've ever heard my M2. So I just want to point that out. Like these local LLMs are going to be putting your device to work if you can run it at all. Even some of these smaller models, still really resource intensive, but let's go ahead and just let this finish. Okay, so it looks like we're getting stuck here on one of these models. I'm gonna go ahead and guess this is the Rocket 3B. I'm just gonna comment this out. We're gonna rerun and hopefully we'll get everything through. We are super early to using local LLMs in this type of way at this type of volume. So I'm not surprised to see things going wrong here. We're just gonna rerun. I'm almost confident that my machine is just maxing out and killing one of these programs and freezing and stalling everything else. Okay. So that finished, we did have to take out Rocket 3B, but let's go ahead and just look at the results. So you can see here right away, we have 14 success, 16 failure. When we were using cloud providers, we had most of our cases succeed, right? So let's look at the results here. Right off the back, you can see that our top performing model is gonna be Mistral 7B. It looks like both of the previous version and the new version came really close to performing really well. Let's go ahead and just look at the exact cases, right? We have a couple of cases here, you know, select five users where we are selecting from users limit five, but we're looking at a specific column and not every column, which is what most of the higher end models do. And then we have, you know, select just five users. It's trying to order randomly for some reason, uh, order by random here again and then we have select all user fields you can see that this was working here um, not working here and you can see here phi got that one right and then you can see uh phi just fully crashed um you can see that uh it looks like it probably just blew out of memory and you know this just kind of goes to show the point that you know these models aren't ready they're not really ready to be run on device at scale and you know to be fair i am pushing my machine pretty hard by running all these tests really fast back to back what it looks like llama file is doing is allocating a certain amount of memory to run the models. So it's kind of setting it up, mounting it, and then it's running the prompts against it, right? So any local LLM provider is going to have to do that type of work. It needs to mount, it needs to allocate memory, a large chunk of memory in order to actually run any one of your prompts. But you know, 
all in all, even with five crashing, even with it looks like, you know, we had uh, Rocket 3B crashing, still not too bad, right? In a really closed environment, you could feasibly see, you know, running one of these LLMs with decent success, specifically the Mistral model, right? Like we could clean this up, we could do some more prompt engineering to get this working in some capacity. But, you know, why would I do that right now when I could just click on GPT 3.5, GPT 4, and have all of these passing at 100. If we open up our eval runs here and just go back to the previous run, you know, the results look very different, right? <laughs> GPT 4 just killing it 100% everywhere with no issues. GPT 3.5 basically still getting 100%. It looks like it just pulled out every single one of the fields. We can let that pass, right? It literally just selected every column from the user's table. And we can look at the user's table here again, right? If we look at NLQ slash prompt, you know, it's looking at that user's table. It's got the ID, it's got created, updated, you know, so basically just manually selected all the fields. This is passable, that's fine. So really GPT 3.5 also did an amazing job. Uh, Vertex doing okay, got three failures here. It looks like these are probably also passable, you know, but then we go to our local open source models and, um, you know, not quite the same picture, a lot more work needing to be done here to clean these up. We have one model fully crashing and this is already after pruning a model completely. There's a lot more to go here. There's a lot more work to be done. I just wanna call something out. This isn't all bad news. There's something really magical about these local LLMs. Let me, let me show you exactly what I mean. So if we open up the prompt foo configuration and let me just go ahead and get rid of um, these models here. And let me just run Mistral. I'm gonna boost the repeat to five. Now Mistral 7B is going to run 50 prompts using this prompt template. It's gonna run each one of these tests five times, right? So, you know, we have 10 tests here. That's gonna give us 50 tests. I'm just gonna let this rip. Let me show you something really cool, something really magical about these local open source models. So that just finished, you know, Mistral performed fairly well. Looks like we got 30 successes, 20 failures. And, you know, again, I just want to call it out running the M2 64 gigabyte memory. It is officially powered on it, it, and it never does this. My M2 stays dead quiet all the time. So let's go ahead and look at that test, right? So you can see here, we got 60% of the test correct. This is another reason I like prompt foo. In reality, using LLMs is going to provide variable results, right? They're non-deterministic by nature, even with your temperature at zero. So I like to use this repeat option to see how many times will something work? And then you can get into the probability of your prompt and your model and how likely it is that, you know, for any user, it will produce the right result. So you can set that there with the evaluate options repeat five. That's a really handy feature. Running this model over and over and over really lets you test the output. It's local and this costs me absolutely nothing right? That is the beautiful part. The real setback here is we need smaller on-device LLMs with higher accuracy before this becomes production viable. It's amazing that I basically did this at no cost. I ran 50 prompts at z literally zero cost to me. Whereas when we were running the cloud providers, you can see the cost of every run. So you can see here, two cents burned there, one cent there. And you know, another great part about prompt foo, it's doing the math for me here. I could run this 50 times. I do this for the production tests for talk to your database, but here for this demo, this is enough. We don't need to run this 50 times and you know, really torch, torch the cash there. But I just wanted to call that out. I think that's pretty incredible that we're able to run this prompt, these prompts 50 times. The really magical part here is I can run this as many times as I want with no costs incurred. I spent zero running these 50 prompts. That's pretty awesome. So real quick, I'm gonna talk about a couple things, Llama file and how this code base is configured so that you can run local models. So, you know, first we have to talk about Llama file. Llama file is this really incredible piece of technology Basically, it lets you run LLMs and a LLM server out of a single file. Link in the description, of course, but let me go ahead and just show you what I mean. We can mount one of these models right now in the custom model directory. We can open up the shell. Let's open up a new terminal and I'll just type custom models and let's just go ahead and run that. Um, we'll run Rocket, the one that failed. So I'm just gonna run, literally just running that file. It's gonna load it into memory. It's gonna do everything it needs to run and then bam. It's now running a clean chat-like interface on port 8080 and you know we can run some prompts. Fix this SQL statement from user equal true. And there you go, where auth status equals true 
and user ID is not null. It's modifying some stuff here. <laughs> Again, these are local models. So, you know, we were running Rocket 3B. It, it's, it's local, you know, it's running right in memory. So of course it's not gonna be perfect, but it is pretty cool. You know, list five cool things about TypeScript. Let's see where it pulls that. Nice type inference, type checking, code reusability, accessible type system. So anyway, just wanted to show that off. PromptFoo allows us to create these really simple classes that basically run arbitrary code and return the response. So it has a really clean, simple API. We can go ahead and just look at that. So yeah, so you can see here, if you mirror this API, you can basically run any code, you can run any LLM and return the right response, which is the provider response here. And you can see the provider response is going to be this object structure here. And if you return that, it's going to post your results in the UI and handle the response from your prompt test. So that's what we do here. We have this custom model base class, which handles all the logic. Feel free to check out this code base, dig into it if you want. And then we have upper level classes that basically just override a couple key methods to make the local LLM work and return the results, right? So we have versions for the Mistral, for Five, for Rocket, and for Tiny Llama. So that's all here. It's gonna be in the code base, link in the description once again. So, you know, as you can see, local LLMs aren't there yet, but they are definitely getting there. This is something I'm keeping a sharp eye on. As many of you know, I am actively working on Talk to Your Database, a text, to SQL, to results, desktop application that's going to reduce the time it takes for you and I to write SQL and get results out of your databases. I can't ship this product in good faith to developers working in real production environments with real stakes if I'm not testing the underlying technology. You can't really productionize your software if you're not testing it, if you're not proving it out. So I'm actively testing cloud providers to make sure that they're producing the right outputs you know, using prompt foo. And I'm also testing and really excited and, you know, looking at, um, you know, adding local LLMs to talk to your database. Long-term goal for that application and for all the applications I build is to run the LLMs right on the device, right? So we don't have that cloud dependency, that latency and, you know, the privacy concerns and all that, right? Just a specific use case I wanted to share. I think in order to get real value out of local LLMs, we need to be monitoring how these perform against the real cloud providers, right? For example, you could take a fine-tuned Mistral model that is, you know, hyper-focused on your use case and compare it to, you know, like an out-of-the-box GPT-4, right? So that would be a great test to run, right? Like just compare your local model to, you know, a GPT-4 model. And this is the key, I think, really paying attention to this over time as new models get rolled out, both on the cloud and local side, you should have your tests ready, ready to quickly add new models, new prompts, new variables, so that you can be right on top of it when local LLMs are ready for production. That's where I'm gonna be. It's really clear to me that local LLMs are the future. The only question is when and how quickly can you and I move on the insane value that's coming out of local LLMs. Please use this code base as a launching point to you know help you get all of your tests set up for your own personal use, definitely for your you know production product client work i am hyper focused on that nlq to sql use case if you care a ton about code generation you should have code generation tests right if you care a ton about seo marketing and blog generation you should have test suites for blog generation tests right if you're a trader and you need fast sentiment analysis on you know live video feeds you should be building test suites so that you know when that next you know sentence that next phrase that next word comes in you're running your sentiment analysis and you're getting you know, the information you need to make the decisions right on the spot. So, you know, you get the point here. I highly recommend you, you know, dig into this code base, dig into prompt foo. If you're using Olama, that's cool. I've had great success so far with Llama file. So I'm going to be using that for a while. It's all about setting up your tests for both cloud and local LLMs so that you are ready when they are ready, right? That's what it's all about. And tests help you get there. Prompt testing is going to help you get there. If you want to stay up to date, explore use cases, and discuss the value propositions and witness real products being built with local LLMs. Drop the like, drop the sub, and I'll see you in the next one.